Good evening, and thanks for checking out this video. Since I uploaded my video talking about my collection of short scale bases and the unveiling of my brand new F base VF4 short scale, I received several messages from viewers asking me why I chose to pursue building an F base short scale over buying one of the many readily available offerings from other boutique builders. There was some risk in asking uh, a smaller company to build me a base where it was not an existing motto of theirs. Um, but let me tell you why I did that. First of all, I want to uh, declare that I am not an F-Base artist, uh, nor am I sponsored by F-Base to make this video. They did not ask me to make this video. These are kind of uh, my thoughts and I'm sharing kind of my process and my journey through this build uh, with you and hopefully it will be helpful in your own journey. I really, really liked my red Fender Mustang and there are a lot of things uh, that I really liked about that base, but there are a few little nigglies that you know, always found a way to annoy me. Uh, the first few things had to do with the body shape and the body contour. The upper horn was just so short uh, that sometimes that base did have a tendency to want a neck dive. As well, the body contours were uh, not contoured at all. It was a bit of a, a, like a slab body Telecaster style. So after a while, the, uh, the forearm uh, contour was digging into my arm and would make playing uncomfortable. I'd made some modifications to the base, so I kind of tweaked the things that I could tweak to suit my needs. But after a while, that bass kind of had a bit of a baked in sound. And that's not a bad thing. It just made it a little more specialized. I had the bass set up to give me a woody, vintage, uh, thumpy tone. And it decidedly sounds on the older side to my, to my ears. But that bass was hard to make sound brighter. It had it had its own vibe and its own sound to it, but the moment you rolled that tone knob much past 50, 60, 70%, it kind of had an unpleasant clank to it. Um, so it didn't really do bright very well at all. And that got me thinking about how I could design a bass that would do all the nice thumpy things, but also do some of the brighter things and essentially have a bass that would be just ever so slightly more versatile for what I would use it for. And that's how I entertained having a base built to my specifications. How did I go about asking F-Base? Or maybe you would ask the question, why F-Base? Uh, there are several factors that, that went into that. I lived in Hamilton, uh, which is where F-Base is located, uh, from 2000 and 2007. So I lived in Hamilton for seven years. I attended McMaster University there uh, for seven years. And before I actually figured out where the F-Base shop was located, I had been driving by the, uh, the street that goes, takes you right past it. Uh, every other week, uh, I would drive back and forth to uh, you know, go see my parents. And little did I know, every time I drove past that street, I was driving by the F-Base shop. Uh, so when I finally figured that out, uh, I went and paid, uh, paid George Felonetto uh, a visit. And he was very gracious in giving me a shop tour. Uh, we talked about his bases, and I really got a nice feel for his passion of building. Um, he has a very strong sense of his own build aesthetic, and his brand has a definite DNA to it, uh, but he just seemed so passionate about his work and, and that resonated um, with me. I really enjoy the fact that they are a Canadian company. I'm not saying that uh, to discourage uh, using other companies from, uh, from Asia or Europe or South America. I'm not saying that at all, uh, but now living in Winnipeg, they're just a province over and I'd love to support my, uh, you know, my local economy where, where I can. And of course, the sound. 
Uh, I first got introduced to F Bass uh, through listening to Alain Caron and his album Call Me Al. Uh, I think it came out in 2000, 2001, around there. That CD was on continuous play for me for a long time. Uh, the slap tone uh, Alain was getting was one thing, but his fretless tone uh, on his F Bass AC six was wow like that was how in the post jacko era for me that's how a fretless bass should sound and i'm still trying to get there nowhere close but that sound coupled with what i heard in my head became the sound and the tonal desire that i was seeking between the build quality the design aesthetic uh, and the sound, knowing they're local, um, putting all those things together, it was a natural choice for me to go with F Base. I first bought my first F Base around 2008. Uh, I had uh, a BN4. Uh, I played that F Base for for a long time, and it's appeared on uh, several albums. That was a, a great bass. But like I mentioned in my previous videos. Uh, long full scale basses just became more difficult to play. So I ended up tuning that bass down a whole step, putting a capo on the second fret. I have a video on that, you can see the link below. Uh, and that kind of got the ball rolling with me going, this sounds pretty good as a converted short scale. And that led to me sending an email to F Bass. So my first inquiry was, can you make me a replacement short scale neck for my existing BN4. Um, in my brain, I thought that was the more economical thing to do. I mean, I already had all the body, uh, the body and all the electronics. I just needed a shorter neck. And Marcel for Lanetto, uh, Georgia's son, wrote me back and said, we could, but why don't we just build you one? Because then that way we can start from scratch and we can really kind of get your, uh, you know, your, your tonal desires met. But more importantly, he talked me out of it because the horn, the upper horn would just end up being in the wrong place if I got a replacement neck. It was already a pretty long horn to begin with and it went uh, past the 12th fret already. So if we ended up making that a short scale, it would go well past the octave fret. And aesthetically, uh, he felt it would look very, very strange. I wasn't sure at the, that exact moment that I was ready to commit such a large amount of money uh, to getting a custom build. But the more I thought about it, in coupled with all the other things about F Base I just talked about, I convinced myself that was the right path to take. You're probably wondering why I have this F bass turned backwards here. Well, if you've seen the other videos, uh, and I'll put a picture up here as well, this bass initially came to me with a white uh, parchment perloy type uh, pickguard, but I also had them make me a red tort pickguard as well. So here is the great unveil, because earlier today, I swapped it. So, it's almost like a second unveiling. Here you have my f base VF4 short scale in Olympic white with a red tort um, pick guard. So let's examine this base in, in more detail uh, compared to uh, my first video and my first unveiling of this base. And we can talk about all the design features that uh, went into this. So, how I came up with this is I'm not at all talented in Photoshop. I have really no clue how to use it. But what I did end up doing was I started with a picture of a Fender Mustang that I took off the internet. Uh, but I took the headstock off and I uh, kind of took away the body part, just keeping the neck. And I took a picture of a VF4 model from the f base website. And I shrunk it down and just kind of 
put that picture on top of the Fender Mustang neck. And I did the same thing with, uh, with a two plus two F bass headstock. And I put it on, uh, put it on top. And at first it looked a little strange and too big because compared to the Mustang body, it was considerably wider and considerably longer. So what I ended up doing was I just kind of shrunk the picture of the, uh, of the cropped F bass until the upper horn was close to the 12th fret. And then I looked at the body dimensions again and I kind of shrunk the headstock uh, a little bit. And like, that's a lot closer to what I'm potentially looking for. So while I was talking to Marcel on the phone, um, I asked him, can we shrink the body down? Just make the whole thing smaller and kind of rejig the shape a little bit. So the upper horn ends around the, uh, the 12th fret and not go too much past it, uh, unlike my old BN4. So it's like, yeah, sure, no problem. We can, we can do that. In terms of wood combination, I chose an alder body coupled with a maple neck. Alder, maple, and, and maple, you, you can't go wrong with that combination. It will give you the classic sound. Um, when I told uh, Marcel the, the tone I was going for, which essentially was a brighter, uh, more articulate version of my Mustang, we talked about the potential of using an ash body. We talked about uh, having two alder wings with an ash tone block. Uh, and if we ended up with a solid uh, color, you, you wouldn't see it anyways. But the ash center block might give it a little more, uh, you know, brightness and, and bite. Uh, in the end, I decided to just go with alder. I wanted that uh, classic wood recipe. Alder body mated with a maple neck. Now this maple neck is a it's a three piece maple neck. Uh, it's hard hard to see uh, in the camera, but it's three pieces of maple all the way down the length of the neck. Uh, talking about the fretboard and the wood choices we had with um, that we could use there. The obvious choice was rosewood. Uh, I knew maple for me was not really the way to go uh, for what I was looking for because I still wanted the mid-range. I didn't want it scooped away. Uh, I wasn't looking for uh, you know a slap bass sound for, for this bass. Uh, so I asked him what other options we had that would kind of get me into still warm but with a slightly brighter top. And the recommendation I received was to use Macassar Ebony. And that's what we ended up going with. So this is like uh, a Macassar Ebony uh, fingerboard. Where I want to correct myself from my previous video now, because I received a comment about this earlier today. Uh, I think I caused some confusion when I was talking about uh, compound uh, radius necks. Um, the term is traditionally used to talk about uh, the radius of the fretboard. So a compound radius neck is really referring to kind of rounder uh, fretboards at the lower frets and then a flatter uh, radius higher up. What I was referring to was the neck profile curve because this actually is compounded. So I'm going to put up pictures here, one of my Mustang and one of this F base. Now this picture is hard to take. Um, given the lighting that I had. But if you look at kind of the lines of the, of the light streaks, you will see on my red Mustang, the lights go pretty much in a straight line. So the curvature, so the neck profile, the neck carve is pretty consistent uh, and has the pretty consistent radius all the way down the neck. But if you look at the same shot taken of this white uh, F base short scale, you see that it is rounder at the lower frets and flatter towards the heel. So you can see the, the lines of the light actually fan out, but it's hard to appreciate. Uh, I definitely feel it. Um, so on this base here, it's rounder here at, at the lower frets and flatter uh, at the higher frets. 
what I had described to Marcel over the phone was uh, take the neck of my BN4, which I loved, and then take the neck of my Mustang and kind of give me something in between. I still want to be able to solo up high, but I want a comfortable uh, feeling round, more rounded uh, neck at the lower frets, which my BN4, BN4 had. So I, I'm sorry if I caused any confusion in the first video, but hopefully that explanation uh, you know, uh, clears that up. And thanks so much to uh, the person who made that comment on, on the other video. All right, what else have we uh, not talked about? The bridge. So like my other uh, Mustang and Atelier Z uh, short scale bases, I knew I liked the vintage style uh, slotted saddles. So that's what we went with here. Uh, this is a custom made uh, classic style bridge from Hipshot. The only modification is uh, it was modded for a string spacing of 18.5 millimeters instead of the standard Fender 19 uh, millimeters. And, and I did this to keep it consistent with, with my other short scale bases. My five strings 18 uh, millimeters uh, and my other shorts, uh, I have the string set to give me 18.5. So this way it feels kind of consistent across all my bases and I can uh, you know pick any of them up and they all kind of feel the same. The other recommendation Marcel uh, talked me into was going string through. My Mustang was top load, but he's, he suggested to try the, the string through option. This bridge will allow me to do both. And his, his explanation was if I was, you know, kind of seeking a, a more articulate, brighter sound, then having, having the string go through the body might help me achieve that. Okay, in terms of electronics, I knew based on my experiences with, with my Mustang, I wanted a completely passive bass. I did not want uh, any onboard preamps. I didn't want anything I needed to bypass. I just wanted one volume knob, one tone knob, but unlike the Mustangs, I wanted usable tones through the entire sweep of the tone knob. I even in with, with a set wide open, I didn't want, you know, really bright, ugly clank. I wanted that to be a usable tone. Uh, same thing with it rolled all the way off. So that's what we did. The other um, spec I made is this bass has to be a top load jack. Right there. I've had over the years too many issues with uh, barrel style side jacks. Uh, mostly with repeated uh, usage, the ground becomes intermittent. And then if you jiggle it the wrong way or if you, you know, uh, hit the cord the wrong way, you start getting intermittent output. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't wanting that. I like having uh, a top load output jack. So that's what we did. It also contributes to the more kind of classic vibe uh, of the bass. Now, in terms of finish, lots of uh, solid color options. Again, I wanted to go with a solid opaque uh, color to get that classic vibe. I always loved the Olympic white red tort guard look. Uh, it, was a, it was a great look. I had a Fender 66 Jazz reissue uh, made in Japan that kind of had a similar vibe and Paul Turner's, so the basis for Jamiroquai, uh, his 66 jazz bass uh, was Olympic white and a red tort. And I just thought that, that looked amazing. So that's where that influence uh, came from. So this was the original spec uh, when, when we spoke on, on the phone. And then the matching headstock color is just, it looks fantastic. Somewhere along the way though, uh, I got to thinking, well, it's a classic look, but I don't know, it looks like everyone else's bass. Uh, so I, I, you know, shot another email off to Marcel. I'm like, can we make a different pick guard? And uh, he said, yes, like, what would, what would you like? And I thought having the white parchment guard uh, would look classy and cool. 
Uh, it was also in the, in the dead of winter when I wrote that email. So I'm like, I looked outside and there was a lot of snow. And so this was how the base was shipped to me uh, at, at my request. I, I asked them to make both colored pick guards, but to ship it to me and, uh, and the white one. And I thought it looked great. Uh, but depending on the lighting, uh, the Olympic white looked a little on the more yellow tint side. I'm not saying that's bad. Uh, it's just in certain lighting, it kind of caught my eye and went, it's not clashing with the, uh, with the white uh, parchment perloid pit guard. Now, color combinations are such a subjective thing, but I had the red guard made anyway, so uh, I swapped it in today. And right now, at time of filming, it's kind of winning for me. So that's the base. It's a pretty, pretty simple design, um, but it, it kind of encapsulates everything I wanted out of a short scale base. Oh, key point. I almost forgot one of the most important things. My Fender Mustang measures just shy of 30 and a half. Uh, my Atelier Z and Landing Fretless were both 30.5. So I had initially asked uh, Marcel to make this a 30.5 inch scale base. So that's not the saddle. And again, he, he came back at me and said, well, if we want this to be a little slightly brighter, slightly more articulate base, why don't we make it 30.75? Just add an extra quarter of an inch. Uh, and he promised me that I probably wouldn't feel the difference, um, but that extra 0.25 of an inch might just give me the extra articulation I was looking for. And I think he's absolutely right. Uh, going back and forth between uh, this S base shorty with the other ones, I don't really feel the difference. And even going back uh, and forth between this and the fretless, I don't think my intonation has really changed all that much in the fretless. Uh, but this base is definitely far more articulate than, uh, than the Mustang. So I do think we've achieved those tonal goals. Let's plug this in. I'd also received a request uh, asking to hear uh, the bass tone soloed uh, without a backing track. So here you go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slower passage and then a faster passage and I'll run, uh, run the tone knob at 0%, 50%, and then 100%, okay? So here's volume all the way up, tone all the way down. So that's with the tone all the way off. Here's the tone at about 50%.
And here's tone all the way up. Maybe I'm going to try to give you some uh, tonal variations in between that. So this is fully off again. Just slightly open. Even more open. Here's about 50. And now wide open. So I hope you can hear that through the entire sweep of the tone knob, you can actually get pretty dramatically different tones. And I think we've achieved my tonal objective of having usable tones throughout the entire sweep of the tone knob. And again, this is completely uh, passive bass. Uh, single pickup and single tone knob with the standard uh, 47 cap. These are 250 uh, pots and uh, everything inside is uh, shielded with, uh, with copper, uh, with copper tape. So the weight of this base is around seven and a half pounds. So very, very light. Now I did uh, ask for Dunlop strap locks to be uh, installed because all, uh, all my leather straps have, have Dunlop strap locks on them. I don't typically play standing up anymore, but for the purpose of this demonstration are strap it on and you can see the balance. So I think this balances very well uh, on its own.
Like other F bases, they do come with their own uh, branded gig bag. So here's the uh, F base branded gig bag. This thing is a uh, solid, solidly built, um, and looks great. Comfy to boot. If you measure the the longest distance from here to the longest uh, point at the headstock, it does measure around 41 and a half inches, uh, which is relevant only in the sense that it will not fit in an electric guitar gig bag. Uh, a lot of those kind of end at 39 or, or 40 inches. So these won't fit in an electric bag. You have to get uh, an electric base bag for it, which that one is. Uh, it came shipped to me with extra foam uh, padding at the bottom and at the top, so uh, it arrived in tip-top shape. Anyhow, I hope you found this video to be uh, helpful, uh, and I hope my, my description of kind of how I came to specking a base out uh, in this manner, and, uh, and hopefully that is useful to you. Uh, I think this base so far has uh, huge potential to helping me achieve my my tonal goals. Uh, and when these uh, Tomastic flat wounds uh, get played in a little bit more, I think the uh, uh, the tone of the bass will will blossom uh, that much more. So, thanks so much for watching. Until next time.